Exercise 7.1.2 is set up to really highlight the difference between looking at a single observation from a distribution and looking at the mean of a number of observations from a distribution and sort of highlight the biggest mistake that students make for these questions about the sample mean. So reading through, we're told that in engineering, weights of people are considered so that airplanes and ele elevators are not overloaded, chairs won't break, and other embarrassing things won't occur. Uh, men's weights are normal with a mean of 173 and a standard deviation of 30. So it reminds us back of part four and using the normal distribution. Part five, sorry. Our first question here says, what is the probability a randomly selected man weighs more than 180? So we're looking for a probability. Since we know we're dealing with the normal, that's an area under the curve, and our curve is centered at 173. And we want to know about weighing more than 180. So we know 180 and more than. So this is something that everybody should be able to do. It's old hat. You should be bored that this is a question that I'm putting on a video. Uh, for those of us who use the calculator shortcuts, we're doing normal CDF. 180 to our crap ton of nines, something way, way big with our mean and our standard deviation. And those of you guys in my third class who love to do this by hand, well, you are finding a z-score and looking it up in the table and doing one minus as you always do. So 180, crap ton of nines, 173, and 30. Oh no, and 30. How do I deal with the moving calculator? All right, so 4.078. I can't, I should not, I should just not read the numbers aloud. Um, so we shaded about 40% of the curve. Obviously, my drawing is terrible. If I had actually thought about this at all when I made my drawing, the standard deviations were 30s, right? So this would have been 203. And 180 would have been way close. Oh, it would have been like right next to the 173. So, oh shoot, yes, this is 40.8% of the curve, right? That's that's exactly what we found. So that number makes sense and is good. My drawing was just crap because I'm lazy and don't use my standard deviations. So the next question says, if nine men are randomly selected, we just got a sample size. Say to be in an elevator. What is the probability that their average weight is more than 180? So the most common mistake here is to just do what we did in part A. But obviously this is a different question. Here in part A, we just wanted to know about the probability that a randomly selected person, one X from our normal distribution, one observation, was more than 180. In this second question, we're trying to find out the probability that the average from our sample, that our X bar is greater than 180 totally different question. And the biggest key that that's happening is the fact that we have a sample size. And since we're talking about X bar, this guy here, and we want to know something about him, we need our distribution to be about X bar. So we can't use this mean and this standard deviation. These are for just X, for one man, instead of the mean of a bunch of men. So that's when we need our formula sheet. So if we go to our formula sheet, we can see the mean and standard deviation of a sample mean are given here. So I'm going to rewrite those back on my notes. So the mean of x bar is equal to the real mean. The standard deviation of x bar is equal to the standard deviation for the population divided by the square root of n. We have to deal with the fact that it's a lot harder to essentially roll nine man dice and have them weigh more than 180 as an average than it is to just roll one man dice and have them weigh more than 180. So we need to decrease our standard deviation because that average has got to be closer to uh, what we expected as an average. So the average here is 173. Our standard deviation is going from 30 to 30 divided by the square root of 9, which is just 10. So now if I was to actually draw a legitimate normal curve, unlike I did last time, thinking about those bunny hops, now I'm just adding 10 each time. So this is 183, 193, uh, 203, and now my 180 is a heck of a lot closer to one full bunny hop than it was when my first bunny hop was at 203, right? So now when I look for this value, 
of 108 or, or 180 or more in my normal CVF, this value should be smaller than it was before. Because like I said, nine man dice are less likely to be unusual than one man dice, essentially. So 180, crap ton of nines, our mean, and then our new standard deviation. So that's the most common mistake students make is that they, they still have this standard deviation in their brains and in their minds, and they use that, and then they get these questions wrong. But as long as we see this sample size, which means I've got to do this, I'm not going to get into that trouble. And that I go ahead, and as soon as I did that, I want to like cross off that old standard deviation and just use the new standard deviation. So now I can bring back the last thing we did, and I'm just going to change 10, uh, 30 to 10. And now what was a 41% chance is dropped to a 24% chance. So this is 24.2%. I keep wanting to add a point because it's the way I'm saying it as a percentage. But we're down to a probability of 0.24 or 24%. So less likely than what we had before because we are further from the mean because our standard deviation is smaller and our curve is narrower.